Good morning and welcome back. Thousands were carried away captive into Babylon to finish their lives in Babylon. What could we make of this? Our reading takes us to Jeremiah chapter 52 verses 28 to 30. And here's what we have. These are the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive. In the seventh year, 3,023 Jews. In the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away captive from Jerusalem, 832 persons. In the 23rd year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar and the captain of the guard carried away captive of the Jews, 745 persons. All the persons were 4,600. So for this batch, because remember, there were three giant incursions over the years, 4,600 people carried away captive. Now, since we only have one more morning, tomorrow morning, left in the book of Jeremiah, it's okay for us right now to stop and back up a little bit and remember some of the, some of the key bits we've learned in these uh, almost 300 devotionals from the book of Jeremiah. God gives us opportunity to exercise free choice and make our decisions about how we're going to live in this world in the time we have. We are to be testimonials to his ways in this world. He gave his people institutions to help them succeed in the highest ways, to have the, the best spirituality. He gave them a king, and the king was supposed to take the word of God and write it out by hand so that he had his own personal copy written in his own hand. Every king was supposed to do that. I don't get the idea that Zedekiah or Joachim and some of these guys did the, too much of that. But that was the instruction. That was what it was supposed to be. The priests were to help the people come up higher spiritually. They were given prophets. And yet many prophets devolved into being false prophets, or many people presented themselves and chose to act falsely and be false prophets, to purport to be speaking in, in the name of God. And so all these different institutions, the rich people, the wealthy people, were given their wealth not so that they could hoard it more, but so that they would learn to be unselfish and learn how to use it to help others. But many of them did the very opposite. And so all these different institutions and different pieces of the way God set up the nation, especially designed to help the people come up higher spiritually, one by one, each of these pieces was corrupted. And so the, the, the very institutions that were there to keep us going in the right line, those were taken away. And so when it had become actually poisonous instead of productive spiritually, God determined he would help them repent or he would sweep it all away. And in the end, they chose not to repent, did they? So something we've learned here, God wants us to be spiritually thriving. He wants it. So then God sends him his servants like Jeremiah the prophet to, to bring them up higher, to refresh in their mind his words for them. But they didn't do too well with that. And God gives you and me, by the way, prophets. He gives us word from, from himself to bring us up higher. How are we doing with that? Mostly they refused to listen and, and they would have killed all the prophets had God not intervened. So he must have intervened many times to save his servants. Well, friends, captivity gave them a new opportunity. Swept away bad influencers spiritually. Swept away their wealth, the material possessions they were stuck to. And they go away into captivity with hardly the shirt on their back. Have to start over from zero. And it gave some people to stop and rethink. Some of them never did. Some of them kept on in their self-serving ways, but some... Some chose to come over onto God's side of the question. By necessity, many new leaders were raised up, leaders who could actually come close to God again. So God was working for them all the way through, even in the most severe hours of their captivity. God was on their side. And friend, how important it is that you and I take advantage of the solemn opportunities that God has given us to rethink, to draw close to him, to draw close to his word, and draw close to his heart. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Father in heaven, please be our helper. Please help us to wisely reinvest our time spiritually. Help us to reinvest in the faith. Help us to, to have a strong desire to be renewed and to come into the pathway you have for us. Lord, help us to be men and women of the book. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So God gave a group of very preoccupied people an opportunity for a fresh start. And let that lesson not be lost on you and I. Go with Jesus today.